Hi, I'm Zuna Garrison, and you're listening to Brothers on Tennis. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Isaac. And this is your boy, Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. And folks, man, oh, man, do we have a good one for you today. We have got some brothers here that are going to talk about a project that is near and dear. Bryce, we've been talking about this for a little bit. We actually interviewed one of the folks that are online today, and it is just wonderful that we are finally able to talk to these gentlemen about the Althea project. Bryce, why don't you give a little bit of background on the gentleman that we have on the phone today with us? And I'm going to use this this term, and 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 I, I don't mean it lightly, right? When we say we have a very distinguished panel of guests today, I do not use that term <laughs> lightly. Right? Um, and all of these gentlemen were a part of creating the Althea documentary. And, and let's start with the first one. And we have with us today Mr. Arthur Carrington, uh, and we'll be referring to him as Art. He is known as the official historian of American Black Tennis, author of Black Tennis, an archival collection, 1890 to 1962. He was the first student athlete to receive a full scholarship at Hampton University. And as a coach, he developed a technique that leverages the physics of human movement in a player's strokes and game. Uh, with a son, they coach Vera Zvonareva, who ascended to the number two spot in the world rankings. And I know we definitely remember that because oh, yeah. we, were, we were watching. Big time. So we have Art with us today. We also, <laughs> have, <laughs> we also have George Henry. George Henry is currently the director of tennis operations at Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida. He is a certified USTA professional coach, and he has trained several players to the professional tour including Venus and Serena Williams, where he also served as a personal advisor for Richard Williams. Then, last but absolutely not least, we have our good friend, uh, Mr. Glenn Gilliam, uh, the unofficial minister of all things Black. Uh, <laughs> the, he is the executive director of strategic partnerships for the Althea documentary. And he is also the producer and host of Real Dreams TV, which airs on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network and YouTube. So to all of our distinguished guests, we welcome you to Brothers on Tennis. What's up, fellas? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's going on? <laughs> oh, it's so good to have you guys. So good to have you. And we're going to jump right on in. Um, basically, the first question that we want to talk to you guys about, of course, is the Althea documentary. It was so good. Bryce and I have mm -hmm. watched it several times. And cool. just pointing out, the, you know, just some of the great greatness, if you will, of Althea Gibson was just was just tremendous. So I guess the first question that I'm going to ask, and, and, and Glenn, I'm going to direct this at you because we initially kind of talked with you about this, and I'm going to let you kind of pass it to both Art and to George. But for you, what do you feel, or what was the background that that kind of kind of formulated this effort, and what are the things that you all had to go through in order to bring this particular project to fruition? Well, yeah, let me just say first, uh, great to be on with you guys. Uh, I noticed a little role reversal today. Isaac, you kind of launching things off. That was cool. I like that. <laughs> well, thanks, Glenn. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's a nice switch up. Well, you have a better radio voice anyway. I didn't want to say anything to Bryce. but <laughs> Anyway, no, let me stop fooling around. Um, the, the first thing I have to do is give all of the props on the creation of the documentary and bringing that project forward to Rex Miller. He's the filmmaker. He is the producer and director. Um, really extraordinaire when it comes to documentary filmmaking. He's very good at it. Uh, he won the Grand Jury Prize. This is where I met him at the American Black Film Festival back in 2015. Uh, for documentaries. So, you know, big kudos to Rex, uh, who brought the likes of Art Carrington, uh, you know, Bob Davis, uh, Leslie Allen, uh, all of the principals who were uh, you know, giving testimony within the film. Um, he brought those people together. And, and the emphasis, or excuse me, the impetus was uh, he was born to a tennis family, and mother and father, both tennis fanatics. Um, and his, his bedroom was the literally the trophy room for them. Uh, and up on that trophy room wall was a picture of two women 
One, uh, one was Althea Gibson, uh, and the other happened to be his mother, who Althea played um, in in a uh, in a tournament that uh, would not allow them to be members. Uh, actually, in in Philadelphia, right outside of Philadelphia, um, and I know both of you guys know what the name of the the uh, the country club was, uh, which is this case starts with an M. Mon no, uh, the country club is Marion. Marion, Mar right? Marion, is that correct? Yeah, Marion Cricket Club. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the beautiful thing was it literally, you know, took Rex from seeing that picture for a good part of his life to inquiring about this this champion, Althea Gibson, and just almost effortlessly Googling her just to see what the background was on her and realizing there wasn't a whole lot of formal documented uh, uh, background or story about this incredible pioneer. Uh, so he just started kind of researching, and he found himself within literally a few a few hours starting to put together the the framework for for a bio um, and for a documentary, and then enlisted uh, the likes of James. Uh, excuse me, I'm calling him his his TV name, John Amos, <laughs> who everybody knows is James Evans on Good Times, um, legendary icon and uh, an artistic uh, actor um, who lived in. Uh, East Orange, New Jersey, and knew Althea uh, and knew of her and uh, was very excited about getting involved with uh, this project and really kind of brought Rex to uh, the epicenter of, of, of what he knew about Althea. Uh, so anyway, so that's kind of the backdrop. And once I met Rex, um, you know, it was just a matter of him taking it to festivals and having a lot of success with it. But beyond that, um, I think the idea of really elevating this legacy uh, which has been kind of part of my mission uh, as far as these kind of hidden figure stories, uh, taking it as broadly as possible to, you know, other organizations, educational opportunities to inform young people about really a story everybody should know about. And uh, and that's kind of where we got started with it. Absolutely. Excellent background, Lynn. And um, Art, uh, any, any, any follow up for any additional things you'd want to add to that? Yeah, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Glenn for, you know, bringing me to you guys, because if he didn't stay on me, this would have never happened. <laughs> so it's a good thing, you know what I mean? He's a good brother. And so, um, you know, I really think that uh, Rex did a good job when he came to me, and, uh, you know, it was very difficult to see, well, how are you going to pitch this? Which Althea? How much, you know, like, where are we coming from with this story? So, you know, like, a bit of the, you know, the, we end up in the fantasy land a little bit with some of, you know, some of the things with her life, you know, um, you know, I, I didn't think that, you know, he did a good job with it, but uh, thinking that Althea died like in a happy ever after land, that, that kind you know, that really didn't happen with her. So anyway, I'm right. glad to be here and glad to, you know, to answer, to talk about her life because she was phenomenal to me and never got an opportunity, so. You take it from there. And and George, how did you become a part of the project? <clears throat> Excuse me. Out there, for me, has been really an inspiration. So, I mean, before I even started playing, I knew about Arthur Ashe, and I knew a little bit about um, Out there. And then it just so happened that at the time, we were living in Connecticut, and my father moved to Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, I just read the autobiography of uh, Thea Gibson, and it mentioned Dr. Eaton. And it just so happened Dr. Eaton and my father were fraternity brothers. And when I subsequently moved to Wilmington, I got a chance to meet him and hear all those stories about Thea. And, you know, the rest is hi history for me. But actually, when, when Rex started the uh, beginning of uh, taping of, uh, of interviews, he actually came by the Harlem Armory where I was working and running a program with PAL uh, at the Harlem Armory. And the Harlem Armory was actually a program that Athelia started out uh, in their Play Streets program. So I was able to bring some of the history to my own organization about Athelia. And I mean, Rex was doing the work. It took him a few years, but I mean, I think he did a great job. That is great. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna redirect this back to Glenn again. Uh, so now that the documentary is out and it's been out for a little while now, what has been the response from the tennis community um, 
about the documentary? Um, you know, has it met the expectations that everyone had for it? Has it surpassed it? Are there still uh, marketing and promotional type of activities that are going on uh, for the film? I'm glad you asked, Bryce. Um, needless to say, uh, so many things. Um, number one, in terms of uh, embracing, I'll just give you a quick, a quick uh, story from a couple of days ago. I went on the International Tennis Hall of Fame website and saw some of the uh, uh, information regarding, excuse me, uh, the uh, ba Breaking the Barriers um, uh, exhibit that Art was uh, instrumental in bringing to the forefront uh, discussing the, the history of Blacks in tennis and, and the influence and, and obviously contributions that were made. And the, unfortunately, on the website, the first picture you see is Arthur Ashe. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, about the is obscured in terms of visual images. So it's like, really, guys? I mean, after all of this, um, it is still a work in progress. Um, and as Art mentioned you know i don't want to say it was a fantasy ending on on the uh, on the documentary but um yeah there's always you know three sides to a story of course um you know so uh I i'll just say that the the tennis community as a whole i think has embraced the documentary of course because it's it's extremely factual obviously and and chronologically laying out uh the guidepost of when these particular accomplishments took place uh, and, and of course, you know, just uh, having a chance to present it to folks at the West Side Tennis Club, where she broke the color barrier. Um, I'll just say there was a, a, a number of, of, of open mouth and jaws dropped uh, watching it from the folks who were, you know, 99% white as usual, uh, uh -huh. watching the film and, and saying, wow, you know, almost like, did we really discriminate like that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, I think it was an opener for a lot of folks, but um, but it's been generally well received, and because of extra efforts um, from the estate, uh, as well as uh, you know, finally getting folks to move on things like Katrina Adams, who you know have to give her props in terms of uh, finally getting this permanent tribute at the USTA Tennis Center uh, and the statue being erected. Ultimately, um, you know, those kinds of things uh, you know wouldn't have happened without and embracing and, and people being willing to to get on board. But I'll just say, uh, at my own experience has been, um, I get a teensy bit of feeling of how Althea might have felt in terms of kind of, you know, uh, it's nice that you're doing this, Glenn. It's nice that Rex has made this film. Um, but, um, you know, there still is a, a little bit of a reluctancy to to give her her ultimate props and, and to give her the placement she deserves. Like I say, that that little visual on the Tennis Hall of Fame's website was just an indication that not a lot has changed. Uh, anyway, Glenn, you know, yeah. what I'd like to share with you guys is like, you know, um, I knew Althea from 1957 on. And so I've said many times, I thought tennis was a black game. Althea was number one in the world. Mm -hmm. She was in, from a club in New York. She would come to our local club in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, a woman named Nana Vaughn was the last African-American woman to beat her as a junior. You know, I used to laugh at, uh, they would tell me the story about how this, my one of my mentors, Hilton Davis, laughed at her when she lost in the junior ATA and how Althea ran up into the stands, and it's in her book, to beat this guy. But I lived through all of these, <laughs> all right. these stories. I lived through these stories with Althea, you know? But I also knew that Althea, my friend Ron Freeman from Elizabeth, New Jersey, who grew up together in 19, he got a gold and bronze medal in 1968 Olympics. Black glove, the whole bit, right? And so he ended up being Althea's manager in the 70s. And Althea and I used to go do exhibitions, uh, I mean, you know, clinics, Roselle, New Jersey, all the small little communities hook us up with rec departments. And it was very sad because she was the number one player in the world and nobody really cared or knew anything about it. So, you know, they, it, it wasn't that she never got, she never got her props. You know, she never got a chance to be a star coach like yeah. Nick Boletari, sure. you know? And so, um, unfortunately that was, that was the missing part in her life that, you know, uh, just being a teaching pro at a club 
that's not what she wanted. She wanted to be treated like a Wimbledon champ. Right? Hey, hey, and, hey, hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, and, I, and I just wanted to say, Art, you know, in the documentary, you have one of my favorite lines in there. And I, I didn't write it down, so I'm not going to quote you perfectly. <laughs> but you right. made a statement about Althea had entered a game where she didn't have the social, that had social demands that she hadn't met the social requirements for. Right. It. And but, can you speak on that a little bit? I thought that was so powerful and really so representative of what a lot of African-Americans feel when they first start the game of tennis. See, see when we use this word African-American, we, 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 we don't, we miss out on a lot. You know what I'm saying? So when I grew up in tennis in the New York area, New Jersey, New York, that was, Black Americans, West Indians, and oh, wow. Southerners that ran the ATA. Mm -hmm. And those three groups had to come together. That's what the incredible story of the ATA is, how these communities came together and created Althea and Arthur and me and Bob Davis and Bill Davis and the names that go on and it's breaking the barriers thing. I don't know about any barriers that got broken, but we definitely, you know, had opportunity that we wouldn't have had if it wasn't for that tennis community. So Althea, being a street girl, because they didn't know that Althea didn't go to school from 12 to 18. So when she got to the Cosmopolitan Tennis Club, really a heavy Jamaican West Indian community put the demand, the social demand on her and uh, Rhoda Smith. Rhoda became a good friend of hers, but these are society people. If you look in who's who in colored America, in the, you know what I mean? Then you'll see the kind of people that was at the Cosmopolitan and, uh, and they wanted Althea to have a certain social thing that she never really acquired and left her hurting because Althea never signed on to any blackness. So she never really identified, she would be real clear about she's not using her tennis to create, to crusade any black horses. She didn't win. She didn't get any black supporters from that. And then she had this other middle class factor that was pressure on her of how she was to conduct herself. And she really was kind of hostile. She, she was, I feel it was serious, athletic, you know, serious sister from New York. And uh, she had her own attitude, you know. So anyway, I don't you, you, you need to stop me where you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's well, good. Art. But it's when you good. think about out there, you got to think about Sugar Ray Robinson. You got to think mm -hmm. about his club. You got to think about Billy Eckstein. You got to think about exactly. Joe Lewis. You got to think about a whole society people miss out on. So when Rex came to me, I'm like, do you want the square story or do you want the story like when I, time I was 15 years old, go to New York? You know what I mean? Frank, Go you know, Frank Goldberg, black dude, jazz hall of fame. You understand? We go up there and they playing chess puffing a little gun and doing their thing. I was like, I don't know what story of Althea you want. So <laughs> well, it's well, different stories. It's our I... story. There's our story. You understand? And then there's, uh, you know, the commercial story, whatever. So anyway, I just share a little bit of, you know, you talk about Althea, you talk about the Savoy Ballroom. Althea Gibson's coach was my coach, Cindy Llewellyn, told me that he would go out in front of the Savoy Ballroom and sell 100 joints a night at a dollar each in 1940, live in Sugar Hill, and he was a Mac man. Live with a white woman. And so, you know, he said he would not work on the railroad or in the post office. So he was <laughs> that story needs This to is what place. he told me. This is when he could come to New Jersey and I'd see him at 12 years old. That's what he would tell me. And that's what got me to stick to tennis. So when the brothers <laughs> would always ask me, they'd say, all right, how did you get to tennis? And they would have this whole square world view of tennis. Whereas I had a whole different thing because I'd be hearing about Peg Leg Bates' clubs and, you right. know, the black players and cats with money and the Alfa Romeos and the Jaguars and the Mercedes Benzes and the things that I saw at the Shady Rest Country Club and at the Elizabeth, at the tennis club, North End Tennis Club. And so I, show, I saw the real shakers and players, Dr. Bill Haley, who founded 100 Black Businessmen. He birthed Mayor Dinkins' kid. That's how I know Mayor Dinkins. And so it was, there was a whole you know, what they call the talented 10th or whatever, you know, like that's what the, the ATA was. And that's the environment that Althea and us came in. So, um, you know, that's just a little outside view of 
No, yeah. that's it. Hey, inside, can I just the jump inside in? happenings, some inside happenings. You know, like I didn't get stuck. I didn't get to tennis because I got on a bus and went to John McEnroe's joint. But I used to go to the armory just like Glenn was talking about. From the time I was 12 years old, I go from Jersey over to the armory, the Harlem Armory. That's where you would meet Gordon Parks. That's where you would meet black celebrities. That's who you would meet. That's where out there, that's where everybody would be at these little. So the armory was the spot in the winter back in those days, along with the jungle, which was the outdoor courts. And uh, that's the Fred Johnson part. And, um, you know, so like Althea was super duper. In her later life, we'd step out. She'd have her Adidas warm up suits on, her Adidas. You should just talk to my son about how he viewed Althea. She was like Lil Kim, the rapper. She was no joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sad sister. You know what I mean? right No, she now. was a bad sister. She yeah. was uncompromising. So my man Llewellyn would tell me, he'd say, listen, man, before the people could even get close to Althea and, and offer some, Althea would be like, no, no, no. She was a Virgo sister, too. So you're like, no. <laughs> Shut it down real quick. <laughs> so, you know, but her life, people don't know about her tour with the Globetrotters for a year. Right. And they did exhibitions with the Globetrotters, and she, her partner was this white blonde named Carol Fagarus that they called mm -hmm. the Golden Goddess. And so <laughs> the whole world around Althea that you, you couldn't put everything in the movie. So, you know, I like to talk about what you can't put in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Can I, ju I just anyway. gotta, I just gotta jump in quickly though, be, to, to just follow up on the first thing that Art broached on. And thank you so much Art for dropping all those gems. Cause that's the part that always gets me going. I, I want to do a movie about Billy Eckstein. I want to do a movie about a man like Sidney Llewellyn. I mean, yeah. those, those are cats whose lives need to be uh, obviously embraced and known about. But I just got to say this, as much as Althea was not the protagonist for the black community as a whole, and she wasn't out there in a way like, say, Jackie Robinson might have been or some other, obviously, civil rights leaders would have liked her to be back in the day. She never turned on the opportunity to teach black kids how to play the game. She no. Never, she always embraced the young people. Yeah, you would always see her come back to the ATA Nationals. She sure. was always doing things and like I said, at the Fred Johnson Park in Harlem. And yep. right on you know, right on out to, you know, to at least nineteen eighty or so. We would go out and do, you know, she was doing it out then. And I just want to say that George is the one who mentioned, because he did work at the Harlem Armory, but I've had, uh, just to say, and we can talk about this a little later, but I've had the pleasure of, of checking out the Armory and getting to know it, because literally, uh, you know, what George was talking about earlier, uh, that play street that Althea first learned the game on literally is a block away, this is where she grew up, a block away from the Harlem Armory, oh, and we were secure a change of name for Althea on the block that she grew up on. And we're trying to get it extended one more block to include where the Harlem Armory uh, sits at the corner of 143rd Street and Fifth Avenue. So Perfect. all of that. And is... I'm with you. How do we tell the story? See, this is what I'm a book collector. I collect black tennis, you know, black history books and whatnot. Do you know that all the Althea Gibson books are sent back? You can buy them online. They're sent out of all the public libraries. When you oh. go to a used bookstore, when you make one of them old used bookstores, you'll get a book. It will be a public school library book sent, you know, that they got rid of. Sure. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. how the film has come, but the book, I Always Wanted to Be Somebody, is yep. completely discarded in, in libraries and in schools. And like you say, Glenn, this is an incredible educational, motivational story for anybody. That's what Althea's life is. Well, I, I just have to echo that and say that I, I, my local bookstore in Perth Amboy, New Jersey, I've gotten a ton of black history books because of the discarded uh, books that they were giving away. Um, unbelievable. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know the thing, because out there, I mean, that's, I, I collect books, I'm always giving them away. I'm like, out there, book is always, you know, like. It but on, on, so on eBay art, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. blows my mind how they left <laughs> out. I mean, it's unbelievable, man. So, I, yeah. All right, you, you had mentioned, you were saying, how do we, tell the story or how how does the story get out i mean we got to tell it man we got to be on exactly. shows like this and others and just i mean just just be relentless about it you know so that's what's up well that's what see they have the statues man and so it, the story is made once they put out the air and also author up at the uh the open site then you know like how did that come about? It came about from community tennis that black people provided for themselves, local tennis. There you go. In, in little communities. That's what Cosmopolitan was in New York, Northington. We had 10 clubs in New Jersey, had them in New York. It, 
how do we get some more Althea's? So, you know what I mean? Like, we, we, we got to tell the story and have, and, and, and have kids that can model what we're talking about. We got players now, as George Henry knows, but they don't come from a community like Althea. They don't come from the community that the Cosmopolitan was. We got individuals that come from families. We don't have community tennis the way it once was because our tennis players came from a family environment and now the family has divorced and it's just like most guys put their kid in the tennis one a pro. They, well, they want and, pro. And I think that's good that you brought up community because, and I was going to direct this question to George, has there been any kind of community efforts uh, for exposure to the Althea d documentary? No, I, because, so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, George. Go ahead, Art. Nah, you, I, no, I was going to say that they divide us because they got everybody on the case of breaking the barriers at the Hall of Fame. Like, that's the main huh. thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the main thing. And then they send everybody, that, all the house all the house folks out to try to rape all the true brothers that been living the life. And then here they come with, how can we get for the Hall of Fame? But I, 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 I had, was saying this to Glenn. The Hall of Fame is cool, and white folks need to know our history, but we need to know our own history. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so right. how do we get this so that black kids could know it? White people know more about black tennis now than, than the blacks. <laughs> right. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Black kids don't know Arthur Ashe. They don't know Althea, not even black right. kids. You know what I'm saying? And so how do we make that happen? I, Is, I, just, you got I, I just think the infrastructure needs to be reorganized and reestablished. And I mean, from Well, the commitment. So you had commitment back then. You need a real commitment to that. You said it so. I don't know whether we have a real, you know, how much commitment we have to to building that. Well, you know what? Hey, all right, all right, I just had, yeah, go ahead. You know, that's. I said, nah. That 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 was my first objective with being down here in uh, Daytona, at Daytona Beach. You know, with uh, out of a co college campus, uh, Bethune Cookman. I didn't even yeah. before I got here. I didn't even know the history that Bethune had in connection with the ATA. Right. Yeah, we're, we're developing urban programs in conjunction with the city, with the college. I mean, I don't have a blueprint model right now, but we're moving, we're gaining traction to do that, so. Well, that's, I mean, and the last thing I'll just say to all of it is, <laughs> thank God for Brothers on Tennis, for this platform, for the you know little bit of platform that, that, that I have, but for Art creating this history book, for George putting himself firmly in the HBCU community and the local community to, to continue to you know propagate these programs and tell this history, we just always, as Black people, have to do 50 different things at the same time, and right. that's never been. So it's, yeah, it's always about us multitasking. Um, and, you know, and having the courage to, 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 to stay broke while we do it um, <laughs> until there's an opportunity, hopefully, to, to reap some financial gain because it is tough. I mean, people ask me all the time, you know, are you making any money? And the bottom line is, to keep it real, uh, no, but this is, that's not th what this is about. Hey, um, but listen, Glenn, Glenn, yeah. to, for the kids, for the kids, you know, like being that from Elizabeth, sure. I'm a no you know, like, I got another part of the story. That's why when you talk about Billy Eckstein and all right. that, you know what I mean? I got a story where for 52 years I've been making that bank. I've had Eldorados and Escalades and the whole, you know what I mean? And that's what I want no kids doubt. to this bank. There's bank in this too. There's yeah. money oh, yeah. in it and you don't have to be the star to get to it. Right. But you got to have some skills. It can take you to school. It can take you around the world. So I used to tell my son, I'm going to show you how to do what I did. How to let tennis give you a life if that's what you wanted. to educate you. You know, I met my wife at home, you know what I mean? And so my granddaughter's at LSU, same thing. So tennis has got a, gr a lot of greatness to it, and we got to know our history. So right. I ain't got to no, Exactly right. And, I'm and so glad Art, that you, yo. Let me, just, uh, let me just throw this one at you, because you alluded to this, you know, based on some of the things that you had said. And I am very interested in your take on this, as well as from Glenn and from uh, Coach George. When you see everything that are, that kind of happened to Althea, and you know the real story, so like Glenn said, there are multiple sides to the story. What I'm interested to hear from you is, based on Althea actually not addressing the whole racial platform thing, like, you know, we knew shit was wrong, simply put. It was wrong back in the day, but that wasn't something that she felt she wanted to really 
really, you know, kind of make a statement on and, and build a platform around. Do you feel that that actually hurt her as it relates to her legacy Absolutely. in the sport? Absolutely. Absolutely. It hurt her. It hurt Arthur Ashe also, because that wasn't the way Dr. Johnson saw that it was supposed to be done. But being that I was from up north and saw people from New York and, you know, grew up in the Apollo Theater culture, the Paramount Theater in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Fox. And you know what I mean? We, yeah, they definitely missed out. See, every day going to school, you know what I did? I played my father's number. Mm. Every day going to school, I stopped at the park. So I always knew that it was black business, not just black sports. And I didn't understand how Althea got to be top in the world and didn't have an Althea club or camp or something geared towards black people that the whites didn't want it. Right. You understand? And I didn't understand that about Arthur either. And so, you know, as that's why I said, as a business, I decided I graduated from Hampton in 1969. I've been teaching tennis since 1969. Oh. You know, so I stuck with the Booker T. Washington thing and make my money doing what I do. Please. And so that's, you know, unfortunately, I was... Althea thought she was going to make a comeback in 1969. She used to come to this club I was at in New Jersey, Westfield Indoor Tennis Club. It was the third club built in the state. So she would come up and we would practice and whatnot. And so it wasn't an opportunity to, it wasn't much op open tennis just came about in 68. So 69, it still wasn't much more going on than she had when she was number one in the world. And so um, one of my clients' uh, family was opening a new club. And so I got Althea's job as a head pro. Boom, but Althea didn't really want to be a head. She did. She deserved more. She was supposed to get more. You know what I mean? And so my man Llewellyn, this is the serious truth. So when Althea told him that she was getting married, he said, well, who are you going to marry that can, what brother are you going to marry that can take care of the Wimbledon champ? Let me just put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, what brother are you going to marry that's good? What you going to do? Come home and cook beans and hot dogs? For you understand what you do? <laughs> So, you know what I mean? It's like, but the player, the, you know, the, 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 the thinking part, the, 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 the entrepreneuring business, side, you know what I mean? That's what I said. It was a whole life in New York where she grew up. It just depends on what you saw. And so there was Bumpy Johnson doing his thing. And there's guys playing, you know. You know what I mean? So We, we right. got to make this movie, Art. We got to make this movie, man. Hey, two, two guys, do you know who... Um, uh, Air Sage and uh, Puggy Bell, both of them were on the Harlem Renaissance team. Air Sage was ATA national champ, and he's in the Hall of Fame as a world champion basketball. I just want to drop that on you, brothers, that Air Sage, 1926 ATA champ, or maybe 1925, as, and he was a dominant factor up until 1935, and he was also, like I said, in Basketball Hall of Fame, as well as another man by the name of Puggy Bell. And so when we would go to the Harlem Armory, we would see all these people. But for me, I always, there was never anything written, so I never could read anything about my heroes. And so that's what made mm. me archive this material. Because people would always say to me, like I'm some kind of anomaly. Who are you? Where are you from? And so I would get really pissed when I was young. And I would tell them I'm from the AT, and I would educate white folks I kid, yeah, about local black tennis and the ATA, and how we had national championship, and how our fans, and it just blows my mind that nobody knows the ATA and we got statues at the U.S. Open. That and you know what? This, life. this is a really good time for us to point out to our listeners. Uh, you know, we are concentrating in this episode on the Althea documentary specifically, but we are going to have a part two where we're going to talk to these brothers specifically about the role that the HBCUs the mm -hmm. ATAs have played, as well as what's going on in the, in the USTA today. So look for that. We're going to record that hopefully sometime soon. But this point that Art brings up is there is a whole history uh, that precludes what we see today, right. you know, with the USTA. No doubt. I, I just want to jump in quickly to say, because I'm always interested to hear what Art has to say about anything, and George as well. Uh, these I lean on these guys always. Um, but to the point that that Bryce was making earlier, could Althea Gibson, because this is my understanding and this is my feeling about it, everybody can't do everything, no question. And we talked about the fact that you know we're always uh, compelled as Black achievers of any type 
to carry the, the burdens of the community and, and, and where we can be a positive promoter of good things for the community. But as a black woman, and you know, for men, I think it was different, but for a black woman, if Althea had focused on anything other than her craft, could she have been as good as she was? Could she have gotten to the world stage and been number one and won several major championships? Could she have done that and been an advocate for civil rights at the same time? Well, no, we're not talking about being an advocate for civil rights, are we? <laughs> well, I'm mean, just saying, I think, that's the, I think that's the banner people wanted her to hold up. Do you I know Althea was like 30 or 32 years old before she won her first, you know, no, Grand Slam? No, oh, sure. No, no question. I mean? And right. so she did a lot of school teaching. You know what I mean? Now you look at these women, they're playing later now, like Althea. Oh, no doubt. Well, I'm saying you know, if Althea so, could have gotten paid, Serena would be chasing her championship records. Yeah, yeah. yes. There was no money. So that's... Right. That, that's the bottom line. But I'm, that, I'm just saying, in terms of perfecting her craft, though, could she have devoted any time to civil rights activities and still been at the top of the game the way she was because she was very focused? I'm sorry. No, I, I don't even think that wasn't where I was coming from with it, though. So I don't. Oh, know. okay. I'm sorry. Bro. Yeah, I wasn't coming from it with that. Um, I, I just meant that when they brought up the black thing, Dr. you talking Johnson about economics? Had pretty much schooled them to don't deal with it. Right. Don't touch it. But it didn't do them any economic good not to. Sure. You understand? That's all I'm saying is that, you know, like I thought just from a survival standpoint, unfortunately, Althea didn't think that. So I know, see, I know how unhappy Althea's later life was, man. You oh, no, no. I, yeah. You well, know? So, you know, like I know that in part, in part of it is money in our lives, right? She didn't know how no to make question. it. And, and, you know, like, um, that's all I was saying is knowing how to, get paid in tennis. Unfortunately, the only thing we had was the ATA. But like George Henry's talking about Dr. Eaton, we did have these doctors. We did have these black elite. We did have these black people that could afford mm -hmm. to finance because that's what we did. They financed Dr. Johnson so that he could create Arthur Ashe. You know, the junior, the junior ATA junior program was financed by private donations. No doubt. But all right, but all right. One yeah. one question I have in that: Do you think that these doctors, these upper middle class doctors, really gave conditionally? Do you really think that if players like a Joe Williams or somebody else that really wanted to go out there and be themselves, they wouldn't? They well, wouldn't support. Early, man, Joe Williams was too black. What are you talking yeah. about? We naive, man. You, we can't be naive. So look at. Look at Joe Lewis's color. Look at Muhammad Ali's color. Look at these boys. Look at Jack Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Look at, you know, who in those times were you know, great ones. You know how Thea had to go up against that stuff. That's why when I mention anything to do with anything gay, then everybody runs away from me. It's like black people think you're not supposed to talk about anything like that. You understand? So I spoke out of school and I was saying, on top of everything, the, her, the perception of her being gay. Even, you know what I'm saying? In 1958, is world champ. If you think they didn't call her that, you're being naive. Uh, you understand? My Billie Jean King could come out the closet, but with black people out here or anybody right. else, got to be hiding out. So, like, you know what about that? So nobody ever, you know, when I mention that, they, they, people call me and say nobody else because they because black people would be like that. Well, I'm I live in right. Northampton. Like you talking about out there? What? That's why I said you want real out there. You want to make this thing up for you. I mean, you know what I mean? That's what I told Rex when he first when he first came. And he included it. He kept it in there. Sure. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, for me as a person who's grown up playing tennis, you know, um, from fifth grade all the way through, I played for Coach Johnson at Southern University. You know, I felt like I knew a lot already about Althea, right? I wasn't like your average person. Uh, in terms of, of knowledge about her. But when I watched this documentary, it covered sides that I had no idea about. And, 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 a, and a lot of that had to deal with things that happened to her, not on the court. I knew about what she did on the court. I didn't know about what was happening off the court. And yeah. so it's great to hear these kind of stories, you know, from people who were there. Yeah. Listen, yeah, that, that Althea was just absolutely incredible, you know, like off the court because she went to the black life. You know, we lived that double life back then. So what was her black life? What was Sugar Ray's black life? That's exactly. what I said, Billy Einstein, Charlie Sifford. Man, if you cats want to know what it really is, was like, 
then you get the book, Charlie Sifford's book, Just Let it. Me Play, yep. and read the chapter <laughs> on jazz and golf. Hello. Okay. And that'll open you up to brothers that was doing a whole different kind of thing <laughs> than, the, than the square world wasn't even hip. They were going to hotels right. at the square that, that black men were that we wouldn't go. There's a whole world of athletes and society and Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray and Billy Eckstein and all Eckstein. of them doing that. They were on the cutting there. You you check that out. Because that's what see Glenn, that's what Llewellyn used to tell me about. Right. That was the life that I would hear about. You understand? And so you no, know love- what 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 true player brothers were doing successfully in a time where we know we know segregation was going on. Right. But at oh, the yeah. same time, there was some other stuff happening too. So, oh yeah, another Teddy Rhodes, all those boys playing. Yeah, you got playing. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the sad thing is, I mean, I want to do a, a movie on Billy Eckstein's life. There's only one book I know of about Billy Eckstein. And this is the sex symbol. This guy was huge in back cr- in the 40s. You know, I mean, yeah. He crossed over the yep. white children fell in love with him. Then Billy Eckstein, hey, listen, you young bloods, I want you to understand this. You got my Michael Jackson on. <laughs> Billy Eckstein, <laughs> Billy Eckstein was number one over Frank Sinatra. Hello. Okay. <laughs> oh, hold on. Just let's be clear. I'm not as old as Art. Okay, just everybody be clear. I'm not No, but as... you, you know the history. You the history man. <laughs> I'm an old soul. <laughs> no, 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 you history. I turned 74 January 4th. That's what's you up. Know, but, uh, you know, spirit had no age, ain't nothing happening. That's what's <laughs> up. Happy birthday, belated. No <laughs> Thank doubt. You. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. No, that's, I mean, th- those are the stories that get me excited. When I saw, you know, the movie about James Brown, uh, get on up and just because mm-hmm. I love to talk about Chadwick Boseman whenever I can because he did such a phenomenal job. Unfortunately, it was from a singular perspective, of course, and we know whose perspective that was. But the beautiful part about it for me was when James Brown connected with Little Richard and how that cross pollination took place and what he instilled. And when James Brown ran into people like Jackie Wilson and, and you know, just the mere fact that these greats all had, I mean, yeah, I mean, talk about Charlie Sifford and that whole backstory of what Billy and, and Sugar Ray Robinson and just the confluence of entertainers. I mean, we, you know, we, we, we know from <laughs> Negro Leagues on forward, yeah. I used uh, to practice with Arthur Ashe at the Harlem Armory at times, and that was another whole scene, and black folks would be like, it would be, <laughs> it's another whole world for me. The Ashes <laughs> come in there, and we do our thing in there, it would be like another whole... It, Another whole world. So on wooden courts on on wood. So it, it was speedball, but just the just the whole ambient, everything that was around it was, you know, like some serious action. So which I've been there. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> listen. So, so I want to actually but, jump in, guys, because I want to ask something of George specifically, because I know that um, you know we're talking about the Althea project, we're talking about the film. And I know that for you, George, you know, you are, you are, you know, you're working it out at Bethune Cookman. So I guess what I would like to ask you is, have you taken it upon yourself to, to kind of school your pupils, your tennis pupils on this documentary? Have they sat down? Have you like, you know, pulled them in a room and, and showed them this film and talked to them about it to find out kind of what they know and what they don't know? Ask them, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Before COVID, yes, you know, COVID <laughs> happened and that changed a lot of, you know, things are in, in, in array, uh, disarray right now. But I do use that theory, the connection with that theory, the documentary to motivate my, you know, my daughter. When, it, when, when Rex did the first screen, it was second screening. I was there. I made sure she was there. I think not only my students, tennis students, I think all black youngsters should, you know, really have the opportunity to watch and to understand. Absolutely. And well, so I just, just got to jump that. in quickly to say, yeah, George is obviously, I mean, of course, his his life is is, is built to, to talk about moving, you know, the, the tennis community forward uh, in a positive way, the black tennis community in particular. But uh, the beautiful part about this movie and films like it is that when I first showed this film, to a room full of corporate lawyers. And they had every young black female corporate lawyer in the film. And I'm talking about Baker Hostetler up at, you know, the, basically, you know, on uh, Sixth Avenue at the, uh, at the NBC, uh, in the NBC uh, center there, uh, you know, just prominent law firm. These young girls were weeping. We talked well into the night. They were so inspired because they 
almost had no clue as to who Althea Gibson was. This was literally a hidden figure story where they were watching it for the first time unfold and say, wow, we had somebody who broke two color barriers in tennis and golf, and yeah, we don't right. know jack about her? I mean, so it, it, it was a real mind blower for adults and for young adults. Hey, um, well, listen, Glenn, yes. being that you're saying that, see, that's what I was kind of speaking to. Now, imagine if Althea had it like that where she could go from being number one tennis player to being in the top 10 in women's golf, Mm -hmm. what, don't you think she had potential to be like um, Madam C.J. Walker? Oh, please. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, yep. come Without on, man. That, if she put that energy into something that was, you know, like, not no, golf and tennis anymore, not a game right. of chance, but some stable action. Right. Yeah. You know, no, I just, it, yeah. And that's the unfortunate thing, as you were saying, Art, you know, the mere fact that she had access tangibly to folks like Sidney Llewell and, 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 and Sugar Ray, um, you know, and, and folks of that ilk, and, you know, unfortunately did not end up parlaying. In, in, we don't in, good at good advice, but Sidney broke, end up, he ended up without the money, you know what I mean? And sure, at the, sure. At the end of the story, in the movie, do you know that they got married? Oh, yeah. No, that's mm -hmm. that's talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and that was, I mean, from my perspective, from what I understand, that was done so so he could accommodate, he could accompany her uh, yeah, they won't travel. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was. I was just was wondering. Yeah, so yeah. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to jump in here because we are actually, unfortunately, coming to the end of our time for the first part of, of, of this interview. What we kind are. Of focus? I, Wait a second. Hold on. I what? am sorry, <laughs> but we cannot end this first part without doing a couple of things. Number one. Um, Glenn, I'm going to want you to tell our listeners yes. who are now interested in viewing the Althea documentary how sure. and where they can do that. Sure. And then I'd like for each one of you to tell us what is your kind of parting thought on the Althea documentary? What is it that you would like for our listeners to take away uh, or to encourage them to go view this wonderful piece of art? Well, let me just start off saying, Brothers on Tennis, please just stay healthy, keep doing what you're doing, because we have got to continue to expand on this platform and others like it. Um, Arthur Carrington, you need to be doing a podcast. Um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about that, and we might have to get Chester involved since he has a, a great handle on that. Okay. Um, you know, but there's so much here. Okay, so I'm sorry not to dribble on. AltheaTheFilm.com is still the website for the actual documentary. You can see the trailer there, but in terms of actual viewing, uh, I believe it's still on Vimeo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. But the idea of providing screenings with people like Arthur and George as panelists to talk about the real life uh, teachable moments from her history and from the history of, of black tennis, ATA tennis, um, those screenings are still gonna go on. Of course, as, as George mentioned, COVID, um, this was the 70th anniversary, 2020 was the 70th anniversary of her breaking the color barrier. We had a number of memorial and, and, and uh, commemorating events. Um, those are going to be picked up for 2021 uh, for the most part, as far as I understand. There's going to be others who are going to have to lobby and, and, and re-initiate uh, some conversation. But AltheaTheFilm.com, please, if you're interested at all in uh, doing a screening, uh, please hit my email address at ggilliam281 at aol.com. I apologize that that's not more <laughs> corporate-like, but um, yeah, that's cool. how you could reach me. I'm on IG at realglenn uh, underscore G. Um, yeah, so, you know, hopefully folks can reach out uh, if you want to do a screening because it is a diversity and inclusion, and I say Black inclusion, success story that needs to be told. And in this era of social justice and Folks giving some lip service, but real folks putting some dollars behind educating their employees or educating uh, the masses about these important Black success stories. Please see this Althea Gibson story. It's one of many that need to be seen, but it's important. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get a chance to, uh, to talk about it as we go forward. And Glenn, isn't it yeah. also still available on Amazon Prime Video? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. It, it is available uh, on DVD uh, on Amazon Prime Video. Um, there's, yeah, I mean, let me just say that. And 
literally there's more than one documentary. Um, but Rex is, is, I think, the best, the most comprehensive. Uh, but yeah, I do have to say, Angela Buxton, her former doubles partner, who's a principal in the documentary, uh, did do a documentary of her own called The Match. Um, I, I think that might be still available. Um, but, you know, there's, there's some stories out there. And please get that book, as Art was talking about. Uh, I always wanted to be somebody. What an I mean, just the title alone tears at your heart. Uh, but that is um, an incredible story, and and as far as books are concerned, we hope uh, there won't we won't have to go through the discarded bins to get more of this Black history. This is stuff that we need to uh, you know continue to promote and elevate, and 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 that's uh, you know, that's another problem for another day. But the last thing I'll just say quickly is that we've got Joe Biden in office right now, and thankfully because of George, I've connected with a gentleman who grew up with Joe Biden, and who mm. is, is very much interested in elevating Althea's legacy. Um, I won't even tell you what he was thinking about trying to do, but um, one of the things that we've talked about is getting her the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which has been oh, tainted. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, it was tainted by Trump, but we will reclaim it with Joe and Kamala. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, that is something that we expect to, uh, you know, once he gets 100 days under, you know, once he's got some chance to breathe, uh, we will we will present that as well as the Congressional Gold Medal. And we're still going to pursue things at the French Open and Wimbledon and yada, yada, yada. So, yeah, please hit me up, whatever contact information you need. Uh, and, and we'll talk about uh, screenings and, and the like. We have a study guide for uh, grade schoolers and high schoolers. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And so, George, your final thoughts on the documentary. Well, I, I just want all the tennis history people to understand there really was a history a black history in tennis of relevance yeah. for venus and serena um mm -hmm. that dominated that was just as talented if not more um and just you know hopefully it, it will inspire more and hopefully we can get some more stories told out there perfect and art we give you the last word yeah, so um, I've always think that Althea is a, a great motivating story for men, women, children, anybody. And um, I think that we should look at how she was developed. If we want to really pay true testament to Althea, then we need to try to create a system that creates more Altheas. <laughs> and that is Black women have an opportunity to, to have a sport and education. Well, we just got to say, though, Art, I mean, thankfully, the legacy at least has come full circle in terms of our greatest American tennis players, Black American tennis players, have been women for the last 20 years. <laughs> right. They can't right. be overlooked. You know? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, at least even if it, had, it only came out of families individually, people who, you know, Richard Williams and Naomi well, that's great. and what have that's you. Great. But it's, yeah, it's important. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's the family thing is, you know, that's why, but... When the ATA was at the top of his, the height of his thing, it, it sure. was family organization. I think that's where we kind of lost direction. Exactly. Once exactly. we start going and we want professionals before you want adults recreating in tennis. And then yep. their kids come as a result of that. Very few kids come to tennis, coming home, sit, telling their parents they want to go play tennis. They don't see it. You got to go out your way to play tennis. So we need to make it more visible. Tennis has to be more visible in black communities. You know what I mean? That's what I'm that's about. Right. That's that, you right. understand? Visibility requires supporting black coaches as well, because those are the ones who get them started, but they don't see necessarily the monetary reward from that. A lot of that stuff is given away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that's why I come back to the tennis community. And that's where I was saying recreational adults, the whole ATA started from adults who, you know, wanted to mirror their counterpart. The white middle class was playing tennis. So the black middle class played tennis. You understand? And so we can't overlook the fact of where did it all start? It started with black families that wanted recreation because they weren't any good when they first started. Everybody was everybody was new to the game. So right. black tennis evolved after the first generation. They did, you know, the original players, when you're talking about the, the early national champions, they had very crude skills. It wasn't until their children and the children, you know what I mean? Once these facilities took hold in the communities, then you had a chance for out there off the ash myself because you needed con continuity, consistency, you know what I mean? And, and so that's what we had, a place to go play tennis every day. 
That's what we need. Excellent. Yeah. Gen- all right, so that, well, yeah. gentlemen, let me just say this. It has been an incredible, incredible honor to have yes. you on this podcast. This is just the start. So, folks, let me let you know we are not cutting this short because we will have future discussions with Art Carrington, with George Henry, and with Glenn Gilliam. So this is just the start of things. Gentlemen, we want to thank you so much for being on Brothers on Tennis and for sharing the story, giving your perspective on the Althea documentary and project as a whole, man. It has just been an absolute pleasure. Awesome. And to, yeah, and to our listeners, yeah. please, if you have not watched the Althea documentary, please get out there and watch it. It is an amazing piece of work, very well done, and these gentlemen all played a part in making it happen. So until we have part two for you guys, uh, this has been your boy Bryce. And this is your boy Isaac. And we are Brothers on Tennis, and we'll talk to you soon.